I'll have to go back and take a look at that one. But uh, we are off, uh, Rupal and Justin. You got Justin has the, is it the negative link, or the electric link there. And then uh, Rupal's using a uh, Koopa Jr. sprite. Yes, I like seeing all these different sprites. I've never actually seen somebody use this one uh, and erase the wireframe link. Yeah, some of the sprites, uh, it's really interesting how they, they mess with the palettes in the games. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't give you technical explanations on why th certain things happen, but you see, you know, boss colors change in different rooms that have, have different colors because certain things, you know, share the palettes. But, uh, yeah, burn a start. Uh, how do you feel about that? Ugh. I mean... To be honest, it's probably the least useful weapon in the game you can get, but hey, it's something, I guess. Yeah, I I think it's probably the, the least uh, favored opening weapon, at least from the in, informal survey I've taken from you know, every single person I ask. <laughs> bombs would probably be, be second least favorite, but at least it gives you bombs and you don't have to do the bomb farming. That's that's really what standard mode escape has, has been at this point. Uh, how long does it take to find your first bomb? Yeah, that's the, that's the thing I realized while playing myself in the first few weeks is when you do get the bomb opening, yeah, it, it's a bit of a chore to learn and get the, the proper strats, but then again, you have bombs, so that that's one less stress you have in the beginning of the race. <laughs> yeah, as long as you practice those strats and you can get, uh, you can kill everything in five bombs, um, six with the rod, I guess. You'll have at least four coming out. It gives you a little bit of margin of error. So I, I definitely don't mind it so much. Uh, Burna, it, it, it's just it's just not as fun. I don't know, but. Uh, if you practice Burna, you can definitely uh, get some tricks. Uh, the cane does knock the enemy up and to the left, so you can corner it a little bit. Yeah, you can definitely take advantage of how the cane works. It does require a bit of knowledge, but like everything in Rando, at this point I think these guys are pretty much accustomed to every weapon you can get. Uh, Hookshot's a really nice early item to pick up. Uh, it's gonna make, it's gonna give you a little bit of, of movement advantage. Uh, not, it's not boots, it's not the flute, but it does give you double speed movement uh, where it's accessible. It's also the first item that lets us check our stun prize, and it's gonna instant kill a lot of the sewer enemies too. So uh, that'll make their last minute bomb farming a bit easier. And looks like Rubble already checked what the stun prize is with the green guard here. It was five arrow drop. And not one of the better stun prizes. Full magic, uh, bomb packs, a fairy, those are always really convenient to know about. But uh, the knowledge in and of itself is useful. Indeed, and knowledge is half the battle, especially in Randomizer, that much I can tell you. How many seeds have we just, I don't know, seen lost or won because somebody knew something <laughs> way before their opponent, huh? I could not agree with you more. I, uh, you know, do a lumberjack check if you get an early book. Do a ped check. Uh, you know, if you know these things and your opponent doesn't, uh, it, just just like sequence breaking, you know, the the knowledge can make things more difficult, and you have to make sure that you don't make a wrong decision. Uh, but you know, that goes with skill. Indeed. Now, thus far, this is pretty much a standard thing that's going to happen in every, well, standard opening mode. Pun not intended here. But uh, if nice. they go through the back sewers here, and depending on what they get through it, it I'm pretty sure they're going to go with just, you know, either the bomb strat, uh, bomb farm strat at the beginning, or either. Uh, go check Lumberjack and that, but that seemed a bit less popular nowadays. Yeah, Justin uh, not switching to the hook shot for farming, but uh, does pick up a bomb on that on those uh, ropes there, so he's he's basically set for the rest of this. Yep, 
that's the only really thing you have to worry about here in the escape is trying to find your first bomb so you can open up the, the, that wall at the end there. And there we go, Rubble also gets his bomb. Yeah, uh, Ripple's about a couple rooms at, rooms behind at this point. It's got diverted a little bit on some uh, extra farming and some extra guard stunning. So a lot of uh, a lot of time spent on standard mode talking about getting a bomb, finding out what's back here. We got 100 rupees, three bombs, and a five-hour capacity upgrade. So uh, that is zero hype. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the most hype thing we just saw is a uh, bomb drop. <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty nice. I mean, I guess maybe 100 rupees is kind of nice too. Makes it sure they have enough rupees at the beginning without having to farm. At least for Kakariko Village, that is. I uh, can't have Samaria in the Sanctuary chest. So they got both canes now. Uh, Samaria doesn't unlock anything for quite a while. Uh, you need many, many more items be before that's going to become useful. But it's nice to get out of the way. Yeah, it's one of those, uh, I'd say, key items you, you need in the seed. But uh, like you said, it's going to eventually be useful. So Justin is, uh, he, he, he did the tree pull there, we found a, a bomb, uh, bombs on the tree pull, and a glove at the vanilla mushroom spot. Hey, that's a pretty good find. That's a very nice find. Uh, early glove, super nice to get. Uh, the going without the glove can make so many rotting positions hard. Uh, if you go into the dark world without the, without the glove, you'll find even the the most experienced runners just occasionally walking up the rocks and trying to pick them up. Oh yeah, it, it happens very often that you just find yourself blocked by the the the, the things that usually you don't find any problem. Just like getting into Skull Woods from behind Kakariko, you're blocked there too. <laughs> Exactly. People, uh, they'll go to Dark World and they'll try to go up to Zora uh, or Catfish and be like, oh, wait, there's a block here. Same thing with the sword and trying to get it, you know, the Mothula. Uh, so many people will still you know, try to get the Mothula without a sword. It's just uh, muscle memory. Now, so far, this blind side has been very tame. Yeah, uh, Rupal's been a little bit slower so far. Uh, it's j now only just heading out of the Lost Woods. Uh, he did give us a Lumberjack check, and that's a uh, small piece of heart, so uh, we're not going to need to complete Aiga simply for that item. Uh, we might need it for uh, other items or d d general Dark World access. Yeah, he did use the hookshot a bit less than his opponent Justin, but... Uh, it's still very early in the beginning, so of course nothing of this is really set in stone. And uh, oh, there we go! Finally, something useful. <laughs> I was about to say this Kakariko is a bit disappointing, but uh, they got a moon pearl out of it. It's something. Yeah, that's that's their second of their three dark dark world uh, item prerequisites, and they also picked up the bottle so they can get their sick sick kid fetch quest done right away yep a nice bottle full of bees they found down there now afterwards it's pretty accustomed to just go south of Kakariko and see what's in the library and what's at the race mini game. and after that though it just becomes a matter of preference where the runners want to go and what is that 
That's a mirror. Wow, mirror on circuit there. Uh, that is that that is really nice. Uh, if they sequence break up the Death Mountain, uh, or find the lamp or flute to get up there logically, uh, that opens up a lot of chests. I would not be surprised in the least to see uh, one or both of the runners either go up there immediately after Kakariko or go up there after doing South Shore. It's just so many items. Yeah, given their bomb count, I'd say they probably want to go to the South Shore first. But you never know. Somebody might take a, a bit of a risk and go there later. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Another cool item. Race mini game having the lamp. It looks like Justin opts to go f get it right now. Now I know a lot of people can get by with, without the lamp, you know, because they know dark rooms and yada yada yada. But uh, without having any fire rod, this is your source of fire, which can be useful to light the torches. So can't really skip on it just yet. Absolutely. Uh, I think you know, even if you are comfortable doing dark rooms, uh, it's it's worth the time to pick it up just to make those rooms easier. Uh, even if you're really, really competent, you're, you're at least going to save that much time. But more important is, of course, uh, the, the fire source. Uh, Desert Palace, uh, Misery Mire, uh, Tower of Hera, you know, there's lots of dungeons that have uh, locations that are blocked by uh, torches. Yeah, and now that they have like the hook shot, the mirror, and the glove, the, the lamp, yeah, just like <laughs> just like we thought, this is yeah, this is a Death Mountain seed. They have it's screaming, go to Death Mountain. <laughs> yeah, I I thought this would have been a good play, even if it was a sequence break up here, uh, because this is not a difficult dark room. It's it's actually it is a little bit tricky without a sword. With the sword, it's it's very straightforward. Uh, but when, once you get the lamp and this is no longer a sequence break, then by all means, head up to Death Mountain, says Justin. Rupal says head to South Shore. And just like somebody just said in chat, uh, if Rubble does find uh, the mitts down here, that's going to be an extra thing for him. Yeah, so a lot of people do uh, like to go up here once they have the mitts, and there are seven items just here in the dam and the mini Mordorn cave. So, you know, by no means is, is this a, uh, a bad place to check. Uh, you can also, uh, he has the pearls so he can uh, fake flipper into Waterfall Fairy if he wants to, uh, loop in Ice Rod Cave. There's a lot of value down here. You know, these mini mold arms are pretty easy to deal with when you have a hook shot. I was kind of hoping we get to see the bee uh, take those guys out, but uh, wow, we found the glove there. Uh, Rupal finds the mitts, so now we'll have that more efficient uh, Death Mountain trip, able to do both light and dark East Death Mountain. That's the best thing you could find down there. We totally did not predict that at all. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, and you're and you're right. This seed is absolutely screaming Death Mountain because Justin finds the bow in the Tower of Hera, uh, and it's in the first chest in Hera, so it's not even in the basement. It's not even a gamble. You just walk in, and the, and the game says, here, take this bow. Man, this... This seed is amazing so far. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little surprised that Rubel didn't just find the Triforce there in Ice Rod Cave. Well, uh, I, now the, the big question is, what's the next progression they're going to find? And what dungeon are, are they going to, you know, try and conquer next? Because we saw Justin just dipping a bit inside of Tower of Hera, deciding not to go any further in. Well, the 
uh, of the items that are required to complete the game in 100% of the seeds, uh, the bow is the one that can be in the in the largest number of locations. Uh, there's only eight spots in the entire game locked by the bow, uh, and four of those are in the top of Gan's tower. So, uh, getting that out of the way is very good. Uh, the cane locks quite a few places as well. They already have that. Uh, the the ice rod, if that's required, uh, is the is the most the most trolliest potential item. Everything else uh, is really going to kind of force you into specific routing. Uh, hammer is going to bottleneck you. Uh, flippers is going to rule out, you know, ice and swamp as places that it could be, which is going to be nice. So uh, I, other than the ice rod, probably not any troll items this game. Yeah, it's a nice change of pace to find actual, you know, a lot of items in the beginning. Yeah, it still might need, you know, boots for a torch or something like that, or a medallion. You know, they they can be trolly, but, um, you know, I, it doesn't bother me as much. Now, that's what's going to be interesting is because of some early stuff like, uh, you know, mitts and bow, we might have a lot of divergence in routing. Uh, starting from here, we already seen a bit like uh, Ruble doing the South Shore stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ruble is going to be able to give us our light and dark world checks here uh, very efficiently because he also has the mirror, so he can go directly in the dark world and uh, mirror to do you know Paradox Cave and uh, Super Bunny, and then you know Hookshot Cave and. Uh, spiral cave on the way down. It's super efficient routing opportunities. Uh, hopefully, we'll get our look at what the Turtle Rock Medallion is, and maybe even a Dark World map check. This is uh, less convenient for Justin finding the mitts after making the initial Death Mountain trip. Uh, he might not choose to immediately go back up there, having the bow might incline him to check out the eastern area first. Uh, being a green pendant, that's an extra item in there. So that's uh, seven items in, in that area. <laughs> Those Moldorms were asking for it. Yeah, Ruben went through a lot of bombs <laughs> to clear those things out. Now, sadly, we know that Paradox doesn't have much in here. Only another bottle of B. Yeah, but we're about to get our first look at Super Bunny Cave. So there's two items in here, uh, four items in Hookshot Cave, and then uh, we, you know, maybe we'll get a Spike Cave or a Spiral Cave. It tends to be either or, since you don't want to have to climb the mountain again. Oh, we, sorry, no hammer, so. Uh, yeah. Not even an option. Well, there's still a chance for a hammer in here. That is true. Justin's uh, given us. Oh yeah, we we've seen Ice Rock Cave. My mistake. So here we see another interesting item: the magic cape. Yeah. Uh interesting item to find you know they they already have an invincibility item so uh all the cape will unlock is uh the bumper cave uh, or agonist tower if they somehow manage not to get two swords in my opinion i do like the cape uh, the cape a lot more than the king just because it's so much more useful when trying to use the, on bosses And so we saw Turtle Rock was a red crystal. Uh, so was, I believe, Palace of Darkness. I'm waiting for the tracker to update. Yeah, so Palace of Darkness is a red and Turtle Rock is a red. So um, so Hammer is uh, can't be locked behind the pyramid. Uh, so Pedestal is, uh, so Aghanim is absolutely dead. If we get the flippers. That's 
some nice dodge here on Ruble, using the hookshot to escape the <laughs> blast from these enemies. Well, since he does have half magic, he'll be able to use it. Oh, nope. Because he just remembered he cannot use it to check the spike cave. He doesn't have the hammer. Yeah, so a uh, hammer can be on the pyramid. Um, but if we get the flippers, then we'll, then we would be able to access that without having to clear Aga. So, uh... You know, just as soon as we find the flippers, then we can say for sure Aga is dead because that gives us full uh, East Dark World access through the uh, Kakariko portal entrance. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's it's looking a bit like the flippers are still missing, and uh, that's one of the things that kind of bothers me a bit in randos is when those flippers are so far into a seed, it makes. Especially flippers and hammer, it just separates your dark world in two, and it's hard to route properly. Yeah, we uh, could have the uh, flippers uh, or the hammer uh, or the ice rod or fire rod all on pe uh, pedestal. There's a lot of things that are valid pedestal items. I Two of the three medallions can be there. This is, this is definitely the seed that if you find an early book, you would probably want to do a pet check. Now, like Chad is saying, it does look like uh, Rubu did opt out to going into Tower of Hera afterwards, just deciding to save and quitting getting back to the Dark World, just as Dust Justin did. So he did not pick up his bow. That might take a while before he gets back up there, just because he checked most of the items up on Death Mountain. Yeah, that is a good point. Uh, with Hera being a pendant, it's not you know a super high priority. You'd be probably gonna have to wait for him to start running low on locations and and you know route Hera in with a uh, an ether tablet check if he finds the book, or a spike cave check if he finds the hammer. Uh, probably not gonna head up there for just the uh, two items in Hera itself. Oh, would you look at that? Justin just found another cool prize. He got the silvers now in this C-shaped house. Very nice. I, I do expect Justin to uh, pick up the boots. You know, being in, in Hookshot Cave, uh, he's not going to miss the six items in Dark Death Mountain. That's a lot. That's very high item density. And uh, Justin's absolutely going to head, head back up there uh, before too long. There's just uh, so many other things to do. You know, Thieves Town is a is a has great value being being a crystal. Uh, there's a lot of overworld they can do. You know, with the mirror and the gloves, they can do you know blacksmith's chain items if they want to. Uh, Southern Dark World, so much is open to them at this point. Yeah, there's there's so much open and there's a lot of items still missing from the seed. So at this point, it all comes down to how many items you want to check and do you want to do dungeons or overworld locations. I think really overall, most people hope to do dungeons rather than just checking overworld unless the overworld checks are very fast. Uh, absolutely. If you can, anytime you can clear crystal dungeons, uh, you absolutely prioritize that. Uh, Justin heading into you know Thieves Town, it is a, a crystal dungeon. He can full clear the dungeon uh, and get the crystal, but he may be leaving an item behind if there's one in the Thieves Town chest. So, well, I have to count the items, but he finds the ice rod there. Nice to get that out of the way. 
can indeed, since the rock is required. It is a crystal, so it will absolutely need that ice rod. And since it's so early, that's one less thing to you know try to find anywhere because it's one of those items that can that can basically be most of the places, except maybe on Trihex and you know on in Ganon Sour itself. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, and in, in, in this seed with Turtle Rock being a crystal, uh, it, it's it can be anywhere. You know, like I said, before Trinex or Ganon's Tower. Uh, with with Pendant Turtle Rock seeds, it can be in Ganon's Tower, uh, but this is a crystal, so that rules that one out. Uh, with the Ice Rod being in Thieves Town, you know, there's really no chance of uh, Rupil not picking that up. So, not a troll item for either runner in this case. Uh, Justin has to really be careful in health here. Uh, two hearts and green mail going to the attic in Thieves Town. Uh, these, these guys do a lot of damage. Uh, you can one shot them with a hook shot, but their movement patterns are pretty scary. Yeah, he just he just got a bit of a hook shot thing on one of the hearts there, getting two of them instead of one. That's great value, and also puts him at two damage, two hits from these guys. Much better. Yeah, he's not in a great position for his blind fight, though. All he has at the moment that can do damage are the uh, the two Keens. And uh, he has very little magic. Definitely not enough to complete the fight, even with perfect execution. Yeah, he definitely needs a bit more backup. Find either more magic or, you know, a hammer, a sword, or something that can damage blind. Yeah, this uh, is most likely going to be a double dip Thieves Town unless we get very, very favorable uh, progression. This is where you want that stun prize to be the full magic pot and knowledge of that to come in handy. So down to just one heart, uh, Justin has to be very careful. Just try to get the blind at this point. As long as you can at least uh, get the maiden to blind's room, uh, you can get back here pretty quickly just to pick up the crystal later on. Yeah, definitely a good idea. Just even if the fight is a, a bit harder to do once blind is already in place, I, I think I'll probably give it a try with the King of Samaria. Um, you know, no, no harm in trying it. Uh, might not have enough magic, but uh, you're here. Might as well give it a shot. Yeah, I think he's realizing, you know, I need more magic for this. <laughs> yeah. Mirroring out mid-blind fight is it's always a little bit of disappointing. There are uh, shops near here where you can buy uh, health potions, but no magic potions. Uh, Rupal having those boots uh, could get the full magic refill off the uh, off the bonk tree by the Dark World portal. Uh, very, very convenient to have those as well. That's a disadvantage for Justin at the moment, as well as the general uh, mobility disadvantage. Yeah, and looks like the Ruble also found his first sword at the blacksmith. Yeah, blacksmith is being consistent uh, with uh, the theme. Now Justin finding his third bottle, having a blue potion there hurts a bit because he could have used that a bit earlier. <laughs> well, that's that's how randomizer works. You always get the item you need right after you needed it. Uh, Justin, you know, is going to have to go back to uh, Death Mountain because he got the gloves right after he was up there. Uh, you know, he'll get the boots right after having gone back up there again. Gets the bottle after blind. It's uh, just not working out in his favor, Dave. Uh, 
Looks like half an hour in, we're gonna get our first hype cave check. Well, with all they have, though, I'm not, I'm not going for too much hype at this point. Yeah, at this point, oh, well, it starts with a good load of hype. <laughs> uh, that's some hype, yeah. Yeah, the upgrade cave, we should call it. Is a, that's also a blue male and a mushroom. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, the male upgrade is is very nice to have, uh, especially w with you know seven hearts. Uh, but the sword upgrade is you know the the progression item there. That's all the swords you need to complete the game. Uh, you'll take more, but uh, you don't need more. <laughs> Every time we find a, um, a fetch quest item in Hype Cave, I think, chat, you guys have to, you know, delay your, your hype rating until we actually see where that item unlocks. Well, I'd say it's not that bad, because having that cane of Samaria already in hand, being in the dark world around here, uh, do you think maybe Ruble will check fake powder? I... Uh, Definitely a possibility. Uh, I probably would have checked it. Well, I was gonna say I would have checked it before going into Thieves Town. So Thieves Town gives you the free magic refill, you know, when you kill blind. Uh, but you would have had to go back into the portal again. So uh, I don't know what, what the best choice there would have been. Yeah, I think it all depends on what's his next plan of action. Whether it's you know going into a magic intensive dungeon or not. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll admit that I'm not a huge fan of the fake powder uh, if it takes a lot of work to set up. I I like uh, turning the mushroom in and doing a hard save and quit. I think that's the better option. Then you can always check the uh, check the powder later on if you're running out of spots. But it's it's a time-intensive gamble. Yeah, yeah. without the hammer, it's a bit out of the way, too, because you do lose your portal by doing so. Exactly. If you have the hammer, it's not so bad. Uh, without the hammer, I just think it's... I mean, you're sequence-breaking the hammer and the powder at that point. So, it, it's a big gamble. Well, you're not sequence-breaking the hammer if you have the mirror, but it's you know, you know what I mean. It's just time-wise. It's yeah. slow. I think this is our first Genoscape check from uh, from either player. Nothing in there, unfortunately. Did we get it? Uh, the ledge check. I forgot to check that. Uh, Rupal gave us K45. I I didn't see if uh, Justin got that or not. I, I would imagine that he did, though. He was, t he was taking the same route. Seems like Justin is rather go find what's in Sasha Lost Closet and inside of our good old first dungeon here. Well, vanilla first dungeon, of course. This this right now isn't logic for him, but not for Rubles, so it's a not bad play. So, uh, I, I guess you were asking, so I, I was talking about Cave 45, Chess talking about Graveyard Ledge, and I guess you were talking about Desert Ledge when you were asking about what ju uh, where Justin went. Is that correct? Yes, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it was all good information. <laughs> I, I don't think we saw the uh, Desert Ledge item. Uh, we, we have seen Graveyard Ledge and uh, Cave 45, but I don't believe we've seen the Desert Ledge. There's uh, too many ledges in this game. Indeed. I'll try and be more specific next time. <laughs> but, uh, I, I like Justin heading over here to, to Eastern area. Like I said, you know, eight items over here, including the pendant. And uh, 
most of the time in Eastern Palace, unless you get all three items, you know, in the first couple chests, you're probably uh, at least going through the to the vanilla biggie spot anyway. And Armos isn't that much of a uh, an extra time sink at that point. At the very least, this is a greed pendant, so there's, there's still a bit of value to get in here, and maybe even a lot of value depending on whatever Sarsh or Larsh has. Absolutely, and that's the first crystal of the game uh, for for either player. Rupal picking up the crystal off blind. So I'm going to have to ask um, maybe... Uh, chat knows or or uh, OSS geek. Were you anyone count the items in Thieves Town? Do we have all four, or did we uh, leave one behind in the chest? Yeah, that's a good question because other than the that good old ice rod, we didn't find much value, but we didn't count the items past that too. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw two up front, but I didn't I didn't get, get all of them. Yeah, sorry Justin, you need a key to open this one. I mean it does make a lot of sense. I mean when's the last time you've been in Deep Sound and you didn't have the hammer and didn't need to open the big chest. That's right, never. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The uh, uh, that, that's an easy, easy enough mistake to make. Uh, Rupal picking up the bow there. Uh, very, very fortunate that he came up here sooner rather than later. Indeed, it's gonna maybe shove him off in the next direction after. Yeah, after right now, apparently. <laughs> Looks like nobody wants to do a basement and maybe find out another item inside of Hera here. Yeah, that, that, that's a little funny. Both runners find the bow, and instead of thinking, wow, there was a lot of value in Hera, I want to see what other value is here. They both say, I got everything I need, I'm done. Watch it be like flippers. Yeah, flippers was going to be the troll item in this seed. Oh, hammer would also be very very insulting to be the end there <laughs> well, Justin's about to have a very very easy fight here having the silvers in hand Gonna make a uh, almost fight pretty much just one shot on every one of them. Yeah, really. The the, the big difference is at this point is you know Justin's cleared out the eastern area. Um, still needs to head up to Hookshot Cave, get the boots, and clear the the, the bunk lock locations and uh, northern Dark World. Uh, Rupal has uh, Skull Woods and. Uh, and the whole eastern area to do. I think you know those are the general differences between the runners at this point. Yeah, pretty much. Well, it looks like. Uh... Google is trying to set up for this uh, glitch here in the water walking glitch. Oh, this is. I don't think that's what he's doing. But, ooh, wow, fire rod on the green pendant. That's a great find. That is incredible. And Rupal right now would really like to have that standing outside uh, Skull Woods. Uh, what? Uh, do you think he. I think he was trying to set that up the water walk in the dark world. Why? Because he wants to he wants to sequence break over to uh, the pyramid. I think so. That would be one interesting sequence break. 
this. He's trying multiple that's, times here. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to sequence break the pyramid. I'll, I, I know I know how to do this, but I've never actually seen this done in a race. So at this point, I kind of like I don't care if he he spends an hour doing this. I really want to see what. So the way it works is you you, you buffer a water walk, and what he's doing is uh, when he has his sword out and he's on the uh, the ladder there. If, if he moves fast, then you can tell that you have the water walk buffered, and then when you when you jump down, you'll be walking on water, uh, and then he can take the portals. But I've never actually seen anyone do it in a race unless they, you know, they've cleared everything out and they know that uh, there is yeah, an, a, an aggro locked item. Rupal has, still has eight items sitting over in Eastern, so this is a big gamble at this point. Yeah, I think he just abandoned it, but uh, nice try, I guess. He wanted to maybe try to impress us. Maybe next time, man. Well, it, it, it could potentially have been good if you had the, you know, the, if the hammer and flippers are both um, aga locked, so they're both either on the pyramid or in pod or catfish or you know some some place that you can't get to without clearing aga's tower, uh, then you're going to have to. Wow, Rupal is making the play. He's committing, uh, you know, the five minutes here and declaring the tower. I I wonder if if he's just forgotten. That there's a lot of other uh, locations available. He might think he's out of spots. Well, he just got a bow, so to me, I I don't think he forgot. This has to be a play, right? Well, I, I, I mean, he, he did pick up the bow, but you know, maybe he didn't like psychologically associate it with unlocking Eastern. Maybe he's thinking like it unlocks Pod area. I can't. I can't say what the thinking is. This seems to be a, um, a really, really big gamble. At this, at this point, well, I don't know. At the very I, least, the, the the only thing I can see that could really help him from doing this is having access to Pod a bit earlier, and uh, maybe routing Pod in Eastern one after another if he finds a hammer around there, and he will not <laughs> because it's right there. <laughs> yeah, you. We would have needed both the hammer and the flippers to be tower locked, um, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, green pendant le led to fire rod, which led to the hammer. Uh, so now Justin has easy dark wood access at all the portals, and we can definitively say that Aga is dead, as at least from a, a logical progression standpoint. Yep, pretty much. So this is a. Uh... A bit of a time waste for Rubel. At the very least, might help him for Pyramid Fairy later if he decides to go check it. But yeah, this is not going to be very worthwhile overall. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, with the with the Silver Arrows, clearing the tower itself is is actually not that time consuming. Uh, I think he probably spent as much time trying to set up the water walk than that he, that he would have saved just by clearing the tower. Uh, it, it can be a little bit inconvenient to actually have tower access uh, when you have the mirror because you have to do the extra saving quits. So that you know that that option can be a disadvantage. But I, I don't know. I we have our first interview question at least. I wouldn't count it completely out now, right now. I mean, it's only just forty-four minutes in. And he did do a few down, so he already got a dungeon under his belt. Of course, Justin also did it. He just needs to, you know, get with this fight over with, which he's doing right now. Yeah, Justin, uh, I, I thought that maybe he would go and pick up the uh, the big chest while he was here. Because it's not... I mean, if you're walking all the way to the back here to kill blind, it's not a lot of extra time to also open the chest. But, but the gamble paid off. Last item was is on blind. So uh, our tracker calling that one. Good job. Don't 
There we go. We got the uh, DLC boss out of the way. The what boss? The DLC boss, the one that's completely optional, not oh, needed for this seed. Oh, oh and, my oh. god! I what? That is. Is this good or bad? I can't decide. Well, I think it's bad for for Rubel because he's probably thinking, "Wow, that was my sequence break would have paid off. I would have found this." Aga locked uh, flippers and gotten all of my Dark World access. I, I think that's probably the worst place that they could be um, rewarding the sequence break. Uh, the best thing that, that could happen for him would be, uh, you know, find find nothing on Catfish and be, you know, and find nothing in Palace of Darkness and make him immediately mirror over to Eastern to complete that. Uh, and then he'll be able to go right back in the pod. That would be like the best case scenario for him. Uh, that's the flippers, and you know that might lead him over to you know do swamp pals first. Uh, he can't get into ice unless he picks up bombos on the way. Yeah, and even then, swamp would still be locked by the hammer. So I think I agree with you. Flippers were pretty much a trap being there. Yeah, you, you, you can you can check the first location in Swamp without the hammer, and a lot of people will go in there uh, if they're if they're you know low on locations uh, for where it can be. Uh, you know, Green Pendant is is you know, just as good a guess as uh, you know in Swamp in some cases. We got a full bottle collection now. Found the fourth one. Gets Quake, that's something useful, at least. Yeah, that is our Turtle Rock medallion. Uh, so, Turtle Rock was, was Flippers locked. Uh, not that you know, that matters so much. Um, so, Justin, when he picks up his his Flippers, uh, or either sequence breaks that, that medallion, uh, he has everything else he needs to do to clear Turtle Rock. Now, Ruble is getting a bit more value here with a third sword on the ledge. Uh, the sword is, you know, it's definitely nice to have. You you absolutely want the Tempered Sword at some point in the game. Uh, finding it earlier does make a lot of things you know, easier to do. With Silvers, though, you know, some of the more challenging bosses like Vitreus, uh, you're not going to use you know, the sword either way. Uh, so it's definitely more of a nice to have at this point because Justin can pick that up at, at some point later on and the lack of the hammer is uh, Much more of a hindrance than the advantage of the sword indeed at the very least It's going to make him save time a bit uh, in the seed and uh, yeah, Well, we never know maybe a bit of that time he lost by doing the tower Now uh, this this yeah yeah this is very interesting. Now I'm curious to see what he's going to do next. Well, I expect Ripple is going to uh, head in the Palace of Darkness. You know, uh, double down on, on this on the sequence break here. What it's which is like I said not a sequence break anymore because he clear he cleared Agus Tower, but uh, what he was attempting to initially sequence break is is what I am I meant to say. Uh, this could be good for him. Uh, he can, with with the bow, he can do everything in Palace of Darkness except for Helmosaur. Uh, so it's it's not a time loss. Uh, it's a crystal dungeon. He's going to want to do these items. Justin's going to be checking all these items. So they're both doing the same things. Uh, if he mirrors, clears Eastern, and then finds the uh, the the fire rod, coming back here later just to kill Helmosaur isn't a massive time loss. The thing is, as long as he mirrors and does Eastern next, that's the important factor. Yeah. Well, so far, Justin did find himself a red male inside of Palace of Darkness. That's a pretty nice find, considering the more difficult dungeons are... S well, more difficult. The, the ones that have the more damaging enemies inside are still left to be done. 
Uh, absolutely. Uh, red, red is nice to have. Blue is, if, as long as you get one mail upgrade, I think most people are comfortable just having at least blue. But uh, you know, who's going to say no to extra health? Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, one thing I'm sure of is nobody's quite enchanted to be uh, the inside of uh, Turtle Rock with only green mail, no matter how many hearts you have. <laughs> So just found the flute there in uh, Palace of Darkness. Very good for Justin. Uh, it's it's going to give him a lot of uh, just navigational advantage. Uh, very bad for Rubel, though. Uh, that might lead him over to Misery Mire, uh, which is a pendant, and away from the hammer. As, even if he picks up the fire rod, he's you know, he might not immediately go in and and uh, get the hammer off Mothula. Yeah, that chain of events was super unlucky for him for the way he routed all around. But, you know, it, like we said at the start of this, uh, this is what Randomizer does. Sometimes you take some gambles and they really pay off and sometimes it's a big waste of time. <laughs> Well, the the early mitts absolutely paid off for him because he picked up the the boots up on Death Mountain. Uh, Justin still still has to go back to Hookshot Cave. Uh, he has Justin has everything he needs for Turtle Rock except for the ability to get into Turtle Rock, and probably doesn't even see any point in going up there without at least one medallion to uh, have a chance of getting in. And uh, Justin is short a key here. I don't know which one he missed. Um, maybe he skipped the bow locked section. I see he was trying to set up a hammer jump. Uh, I, he did. He did use a key on the harmless hallway, and that had an item. Uh, so there, if he didn't check, I don't know which chest he missed. Maybe the basement. Uh, I, I didn't, well, yeah, he he went to the bow lock side. I did see that, so probably in the basement there's a key. Oh, there it is. There's your key, Justin. You do have to do the bow lock side again. Well, he he went over there. He just didn't open that that one chest. Yeah, that's part of uh, <laughs> that's what happens when sometimes when you open the bomb from the bombable wall from this side around, you kind of expect, oh, you know, the wall's open. I just opened this chat. I already did it. Oh, okay, let's go. Wow, well, that, that that's a minor mistake, but uh, you know, not not a, a really big deal. I, I, th I think he can he can spare the the minute minute and a half and uh, you know, it's not going to put him in a really bad position. Yeah, for sure. As long as he's you know still have the advantage with this hammer and uh, the fire rod, he's pretty much doing really great. Yeah, those those things can add up though. You know, a minute and a half with everything he has right now. Uh, you know, probably isn't going to be a game ender, but too many of those mistakes is, you know, it will catch up with you. At the very least, uh, Ruble is entering Eastern here and not deciding to go activate that flute, so that's very good. I wondered what dungeon will Justin do next, because from his equipment, he's still missing a bit to go enter Ice Palace, being the flippers. Same for Swamp. 
and the desert is not well it is accessible now now that he has uh, the flute so that it's probably going to be that yeah my, my money is on uh activating the flute uh checking the three out exterior mire items you know the shed and checkerboard cave uh get desert ledge that's a fourth item in that area and then probably heading in the desert if it's not boost locked then he'll pick up that crystal uh, and if it is boost locked, he'll at least gain that knowledge. I would not expect him to dip into Misery Mire. Um, well, especially the fact that he has yet to pick up any medallion, and we know where two of the three are. Uh, I wouldn't expect him to go in there, even if he had the access. Yeah, Dora Rock is usually, you know one of those dungeons you want to do last just because it makes routing so much easier uh, going towards uh, Ganon's Tower right after. Yeah, it's that and he still has enough other locations to check. Uh, I, you know, For him, the flippers could actually be a, a pretty bad troll item. Um, yeah, so thinking about this some more, if, you know, if he goes in the desert uh, even if he can clear it with it not being boost locked, uh, I would expect the pyramid to be put off for quite a while. Uh, let's see, uh, he does have the uh, both the got that you know, the moth. I hate the mothula. Mothula on the tracker always looks like it's a five six crystal. His mothula's tail. But, um, <laughs> it, that, yeah, it does. Every single every single time I make that mistake. I was like, he has Pyramid Fairy Axes. No, he doesn't. That's Turtle Rock. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if he'll, he'll route in Pyramid before he gets Pyramid Fairy Axes. Now we'll get to see if uh, Justin can have access here. Well, doesn't have access because he doesn't have anything any medallion, which is kind of a problem. Uh, Misery Mire is the Bombos medallion, so that's the one that uh, we don't know where it is yet. If it's sitting in Checkerboard Cave, uh, or in Desert, or out here on the ledge, then you might just you take advantage of it and go right in. Yeah, we still don't know if Desert is boots locked, which might change a lot uh, of the routing over here. Because Justin still doesn't have uh, the boots that are in the Hookshot Cave in Death Mountain. Yeah, Rupal's uh, uh, finally made the, the Green Pendant play, though, and is going to pick up his Fire Rod here. Uh, the best thing that can happen to him is immediately uh, doing Skull Woods. Uh, given the fact that he has to activate his flute anyway, and it's going to be in the area, uh, I'm going to give that pretty decent odds. Yeah, we did see a fun trick there from uh, Rubel. Just anyone in chat who hasn't seen that one before. Uh, if you're carrying an object, it can be uh, a bomb, it can be a Samaria block. Um, if you're carrying anything, then the Dark World portals will not suck you up. Uh, it's good there for getting uh, you know, through the Eastern Portal, but it's also a really great trick if you ever get your purple chest stuck on the portal and you can't pick it up. Just uh, pick something else up and you can walk all through your portal until the uh, chest starts following you again. You know, I didn't know that last part with the chest. That's a useful thing. Gotta remember that. Yeah, that's really good to know about that purple chest. <laughs> Oh, come on, that's just rude, Ruble. Yeah, you, you pick up the gnat. That's just rude. Oh, just for that, you're going to get a whole lot of blue balls on your fight with Aghanim 2 later on. I predict it. Uh, I'm seconding, seconding that prediction. Not that it matters much in um, the second fight, but uh, either way, we'll see him activate a flute now. And uh, yeah, I'm 
I'm ecstatic at seeing where are you going next. Well, there might be times where you find yourself, uh, you know, a little like out of potions, and you just want to, you know, pick up a fairy. Uh, uh, give, you know, picking up the net. If it, you know, it's just a fanfare. You don't even have to, you know, walk that far to get it. Uh, it's it gives you gives you an option later on in the game. Yeah, I, I mean it. It's no powder, but you know, it's the net, man. Come on, it's a vintage item. Get it. I think if you're gonna spend three minutes trying to set up a swag dark world water walk, you can pick up the swag net. Exactly. Thank you. That's a very good go. point. <laughs> that, that, that's a good way of thinking it through. But uh, yeah, he's 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 on his way over to Mothula, so this is gonna get him back on track. And uh, wow, wow, nice uh, zero cycle uh, or one cycle, depending on how you count those Lambos. Yeah, either way, it's a really perfect fight here. Couldn't ask for better. So, uh, having... You know, I've, this is the way the randomizer works sometimes. Um, you know, Rupal, um, you know, short of an item being blocked behind uh, book or powder or bombos or something like that, uh, could very well be in, in go mode as soon as he picks up this hammer. He'll be able to full clear uh, swamp and, and ice, uh, go mode immediately, uh, desert and, and pod. He just needs to kill the Helmosaur, and then he has everything he needs for Turtle Rock already. Yeah, so yeah, Hammer is his go mode. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, there's nothing he needs that could be in uh, in Misery Mire. So I don't even know why I said that. Uh, Justin's heading back up here. He's gonna he's gonna get his boots, uh, but yeah, this this is just really insane. I I, I was not putting this together uh, ten minutes ago when we were talking about the issues that Rubel was having that um, making the Eastern play would lead to being able to uh, go <laughs> to go mode uh, six crystal tensions. <laughs> Yeah, this is, uh, we were not expecting this at all, and given how he routed his things doing Aga Tower, he found the flippers while Justin's still scouring everything to try and find them. Because right now he's kind of blocked crystal-wise, except for Turtle Rock, and of course they could be in Turtle Rock for all he, for all he knows, but, uh, man... Well uh, weren't, where were the, weren't the, wasn't Quake behind Flippers? I forget where, where Quake was. Oh, Quake was behind Flippers, technically, because it was in the Waterfall Cave. So, and if, if he doesn't get the Flippers, he doesn't get Quake, which he doesn't get to be, to enter this, unless he Sequence Break. So, yeah. If he does Sequence Break the Flippers and gets Quake, then he can still go mode Turtle Rock because he'll know that the flippers can't be in there. So there's still some logic he can follow to try and find his way back and, you know, the correct way to go through the sea. Yeah, this is just insane though, and I, uh, and I, I normally try to follow a rule of like, don't even count anybody out or, or too far behind. And I, I, I made, I messed that one up because I was saying that Rupal had a, you know, a decent deficit, but you know, gets to go mode six dungeons. So what do I know? Yeah, this is a, this is a race where. I 
this is rando in general where y you think somebody has an advantage and then the advantage completely flips out because you forgot that actually your opponent has a bigger advantage by knowing more information rather than having items which is just mind-blowing sometimes <laughs> Uh, exactly. So I'll, I'll do a, a quick little catch up here for, for anybody who is just recently joining. Uh, early in the game, Rupal picked up the mitts by doing uh, southern, uh, the southern, like the dam route uh, for Death Mountain. So he was able to get the boots early on in Hookshot Cave. And uh, Justin just picked those up. Uh, Rupal spent a lot of time trying to do a Dark World uh, flipper buffer so he could sequence break past Aga Tower, uh, looking for the, both the flippers uh, or the hammer at that point. Ended up spending several minutes on it, not being able to pull it off, just gave up and went and cl cleared Aga 1 and found the flippers on the pyramid. Uh, Justin, on the other hand, did a green pendant eastern, uh, which led to the fire rod which led to the hammer on Mothila. So Justin has just been, you know, going in the normal progression route, has yet to get to check the pyramid though. So you have to pick up those flippers. So this really, really weird convoluted route that Rubel took led to the item he needed. And then he just kind of fell into go mode. Yeah, fell into go mode is a pretty nice uh, <laughs> word here. Because <laughs> that hammer literally fell from the sky at Mothila. Yeah, uh, that's, and there's no reason why Justin, you know, coming out of pod, couldn't have gone over to Pyramid and picked it up. Uh, he, you know, he has access to that location. Um, it was just, you know, Rubel took the uh, the Aga route, having been the only one who's actually killed Aga. So it's really, really weird to, you know, see in a non-Aga required seed that the Aga play was the one that made the difference. Yeah, and for a positive difference too, a good one. Man, what a seed. Yeah, no love for the net from either of our runners. And the funny thing too is uh, Rubel is very well equipped now too. With his with having the flippers checking Zora's domain like that, he found himself uh, a tempered sword there. So he's gonna be good until pretty much the end. He doesn't need anything. Even with half magic, it's gonna make a very easy uh, Ganon fight at the end. Yeah, Rubel's gonna head over to the pyramid right now. I'm sorry, not Rubel. Uh, Justin is heading over to the pyramid right now and this will give him his flippers uh but unless he checks the until he checks the zora's domain area and picks up quake from the waterfall ferry ferry uh he's not he's not yet in go mode so if that leads him into swamp palace or ice and he, and he, he does full clears there uh that's going to be more time lost And he's on his way back down to either Swamp or Ice, it looks like. Uh, looks, this looks like Ice, unless he's going to get the uh, island item and then you know, mirror into Zora's Domain, which would be the absolute best thing. Uh, this would be nice. So we're, he's checking Hobo, and as long as he goes up and checks Waterfall before Ice, uh, he will also be in go mode. Yeah. This, will, this is going to be very, very close because uh, Rupal has to go back and clear Pod, and Justin already has that crystal. So uh, there's it's, it, this will be very, very close if he makes that waterfall fairy play. So this is good. Uh, Fluting to eight. Uh, you're gonna do this if you're gonna take the portal. You're also gonna do this if you're gonna go in the ice palace, though. So where? Wow, waterfall play. So uh, unless I forgot, and this isn't where Quake is. <laughs> there we go. That's all right. 
So that's go mode for Justin. Um, and he's gonna check this. So he's gonna pick up his sword as well. Wow. That's uh, very interesting, I would say, because going go mode uh, at this point, most people would just, you know, bail out out of checking Zora's domain, just complete whatever you can. Yeah, I would not have expected a Zora check um, after, you know, picking up go mode, but I this is going to give him his tempered sword, and, you know, that sword advantage that, uh, that Rupal was was holding for a little while goes away now uh it, yeah it's entirely possible that he, he hasn't realized yet that he's in go mode um you know might have to just update his own tracker and then look at the items for for a few minutes uh so, sometimes you know with uh with swamp and ice still to full clear as well as turtle rock you know he might not realize that he has everything he needs um and that does look to be the case because he's heading up to Turtle Rock first rather than getting the Swamp and Ice Crystals and saving Turtle Rock for last. So uh, I don't think he realizes that he's in go mode. I don't think he realized he got flippers. Of all things. I think that's the thing because you, you'd never go towards Turtle Rock without doing both these dungeons. Well, he, he knows he has the flippers because he just did all the flipper area checks. So, I mean, he was swimming around. Um, but he probably just didn't put together the fact that, you know, Quake became the go mode item at that point. So, we'll, we'll, we'll see how his, his uh, Turtle Rock progression goes. Uh, I mean, if he starts, you know, if he checks Mimic Cave and, uh, you know, and, and locations that he could skip. Uh, then you know that that will help uh, help us with our our understanding of his thinking. Indeed, at the very least, on Robo's side, we do see him uh, doing Ice Palace with the bomb jump, so it's going to be a very fast dungeon here. Doing this skips, trying to find the big key. And since you don't need any more items, you just have to go down the correct path and you'll be done in about a few seconds. Yeah. And half magic makes it a breeze to go through too, so no need to conserve magic on that fire rod or whatever. Yeah, go mode ice, uh, you know, really fast dungeon, really easy dungeon. Uh, he's gonna, he still has to go back and kill Halmasaur, but once he does that, uh, he'll be on his way up to do Turtle Rock. Uh, both, both, uh, both Justin and Rupal are going to spend about the same amount of time in Turtle Rock. It's not too much of a difference uh, if you're go moding, uh, with the exception of being able to skip Mimic Cave. That's probably your biggest time savings. Yeah, and depending where the big key is, you might make a small difference by stealing a key uh, earlier on and not checking that metal lava chest. You know that room I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely. If you get you know, if you get key, small keys early enough, and you can skip the big chest, um, that that's that's good savings. Book there, that's unfortunate. Um, you know, if he if he finishes this dungeon and still doesn't realize that he's in go mode, uh, he might spend time on, on the ether tablet or the bombos tablet, uh, or even potentially uh, you know check pedestal if he thinks that he might need the bombos tablet. Up, oh, bombos couldn't be on pedestal. Um, I can't think of anything reason he would check that, but uh, other areas he still might go. Bombo's tablet and ether tablet. Uh, mirroring out to check the tablet. That's I'm, I'm not sure. That's interesting. Yeah, we're don't worry, chat. We're as confused as you are. I'm I'm not sure what he's looking for at this point. Uh, already being in Turtle Rock, he has everything he needs to full clear the dungeon, and that is a crystal dungeon. It's also a five six crystal that will unlock the uh, pyramid fairy. So I'm. Um... Okay, I thank you. Um, our tracker just checked his personal tracker and. Says Justin has that mismarked as a pendant. Uh, 
so that clears it up. Um, does, does he have Misery Mire marked as a crystal? Well, there's a dungeon somewhere he mismarked too, or that, or he has like an extra pendant <laughs> somewhere. Oh, yeah, but yeah, mismarking bad information on a tracker can do that. It's, uh, it's, you know, it happens. It's unfortunate, but he'll realize it as soon as he completes this dungeon. Uh, I just checked Justin's tracker and it's all correct, so I'm not sure. Well, either way, uh, we'll have to talk to him afterwards to see what's what was that all about. But in the meanwhile, it looks like Rubel is clearing out Pod very fast here, and will soon join Justin inside Terror Rock. What a ride this seat has been so far. I gotta say, chat, if you guys had fun in this so far, make sure to give these guys a follow. They've <laughs> been one of the most entertaining races I've seen so far. Just for routing alone. Not even skill or anything. Just the routing they decided to take made this a, a race to remember. <laughs> Yeah, it does look like he's on the right track now. Um, as as uh, chat pointed out, skipped the lava chest. Uh, so he's making the, the plays now as if he's in go mode. All right, so Rupal finishing up Palace of Darkness uh, is going to make one climb up the tower for Turtle Rock. Uh, Justin's going to finish off Turtle Rock, uh, go mode, swamp, and ice, and then have, then climb up the tower again for GT. So, uh, a couple minutes difference at this point, but uh, it's fairly close. There yeah, he goes, just... finds his key, and we're going straight into the battle with Trinex. Yeah, the definitely confirmed go mode now for uh, for Justin. Might still be a bit careful on that fight. He's a bit low on hearts. Even that uh, that red male would still can kill can still be bopped a bit around by if you're not very careful or fast. Yeah, I think if you if you have tempered sword, you you can pretty much consistently kill Trinex without ever taking a hit. Uh, if you have Master Sword and if you use Hammers, uh, then it's definitely uh, a, a lot more dangerous fight. Indeed. And Justin just proved me wrong by, you know, just taking care of this fight. Yeah, very, uh, very clean fight there. Trinex just kissed the left wall. Boots aren't even needed yet. <laughs> we have yet to see if they're needed in Ganon's Tower. Yeah, you, you, you do have to hold on, hold on to that that last hope for uh, a Ganon's Tower torch. Um, I I you know they both have boots, so you know they're they're okay either way. But uh, even if they didn't have boots, you know my general rule is that you call go mode, and if the key is on the torch, then you just take it back. Yeah, you, you remove go mode and say go mode none. No, we never call that. 
exactly. Uh, clip story didn't happen. <laughs> That's a very nice King Dash. I always like to see this one. It's a, it's a minor thing, but you know, dashing with a King in hand, it, it just looks so cool. Oh, I love the blue the blue King Dash there. It's it's a lot of fun. And you're gonna get a full magic refill anyway, so there's no reason to really save magic at that point. Yeah, exactly. For the minor menu time it takes you, rather than, you know, dodging or using the, the hook shot, might as well. Yeah, don't get me wrong, uh, the people who can consistently execute the uh, the hook shot and vulnerability, uh, it, it's absolutely impressive. But I, I find that a lot of people do tend to take a hit there. Um, it's, it is, it's hard to execute consistently. And you're, you also have to you also have to switch to hookshot to uh, red cane coming out of there anyway. So from hookshot to blue cane and then blue cane to red cane, it's an extra menu, but you're only moving one spot over. So I think it's worth it for the safety. Yeah, and it does give an extra use for that blue cane. After all, they did get it as their like what second item, first weapon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Very that that was their uncle weapon this seed. Google is making a great way through Terror Rock here. Almost almost half over. Let's see if he decides to gamble on the big chest. And he's going for the big chest. So I, I I think even in go mode you it's it's not a good gamble to uh, skip the potential that this has to be uh, that this has a small key in it. Exactly. I really agree with you on this one. You don't want to be locked with a small key somewhere in Turlock. That's the worst feeling ever. Because you know it's your own fault. Yeah, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, but it is a bit, a bit of a walk back. Or a mirror back, depending on where you've walked through. But yeah, <laughs> a walk back if you didn't go outside. That makes a lot of sense. Justin's having a pretty nice Argus fight here. Yeah, pretty easy with a temper. You get to one shot all the puff balls and one silver to the eye. That uh, I always find that silver is a little bit difficult to aim because uh, he can move around so fast and he's invulnerable for the first few frames. But Justin pulled it off quite nicely. Yeah, you gotta have some really nice positioning or some lead. Uh, some elite uh, bow skills to get uh, your shot like, from, from when he goes diagonally. He has some weird movement, okay? I had trouble with it. Yeah, all all the time in the arrow, arrow game uh, pays off for Argus. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Justin, uh, right about to enter Ice Palace here. Uh, this is the you know, the quickest dungeon to go mode. Um, so it's, I think it's like a minute and a half or two minutes, some some ridiculously small number. So it just has to climb up the, the tower, uh, Death Mountain again. We're both picking up his last crystal here. He's going to be able to immediately head over to the tower. Uh, Justin, if you want to do the guessing game stuff, you can introduce that because we are on a speed gaming channel. Or, that's a that's a Justin Dynasty. I'm looking for, looking at the stupid screen. Sorry, <laughs> it's fine. Um, I don't think too I can. Too many names I'm not on a the mod screen. <laughs> if there's any mod in here that can start it, that'd be nice. I started it. I just 
you wanted to do the narration. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, if anybody haven't played this before, basically when everybody got their... Somebody gets their final crystal, we get to actually start guessing where the big key is in the Ganon's Tower. There's 22 chests available that it can be in. So, which one will it be? Well, I guessed uh, Ice Armor's Room. The last couple seeds, I'm kind of feeling a um, a, uh, a randomizer room today. How about you? Randomizer room's a pretty good guess, but I always go with a number, and it's number two going on the right side first. Because getting a sword in the first chest and a big key in the second chest, and you pick up a small key just besides a... In the next on the right on um, the left side, and you're up to go again in tower, no words in hand. That's the best. Well, I I definitely like the right side and then left side play rather than the back and forth myself. All right, so Rupal going right first. Uh, if we get a key here, he can continue. If we don't get a key, then he has to go full left. And we get the big key on two. Wow. Well, okay, so. Hashtag predicted. I mean, first test <laughs> wasn't a sword, but close enough. Yeah, it still has to go left to pick up a small key, um, just so he just so he can complete the upstairs. But wow. So, uh, crest to Kanub for being the closest guest with one. Yeah, that's basically the absolute worst spot you want the key to be if you're Justin and uh, you're, you're climbing the tower hoping for a big key gamble. Indeed, because it's so easy to find that I neither of you uh, will really need to try and find it somewhere. Yeah, at this point, um, it's simply down to execution. Uh, you know, Rupal has uh, a good, you know, four-minute lead at this point, so he needs to, you know, make a mistake in order for uh, just to catch up. Yeah, the, yeah, because uh, Rubel did not make the ugly mistake of going up the tower without a small key. So he's fine, doing really good on HP too. So it's it's his, his race to lose now. Yeah, what's, what's interesting though is, you know, Justin was uh, picking up his last crystal, you know, basically as Rubel was going into Gan's tower. So if he had gone into... Uh, Swamp and Ice before Turtle Rock, or just skip that Ether Tablet check, they probably would have been on the same screen. Yeah, that's really amazing how just a small bit of routing can change a lot of things and make you lose a lot of time. Yeah, and with the key in that spot, I, I mean, if they weren't on the same screen, they would have been uh, darn close. And Justin gets it on his very first as he opens. Yeah, if you feel you're ahead, then you're like, yeah, that's great. If you feel you're behind and you don't want to see the key there. Um, so Justin, Justin gets two small keys down here. So he will not have to do the uh, mini helmet source. 
Yeah, as we've just seen on Google's screen, that these Helmosaurs are a pain. Now, without the powder and not doing the fake powder glitch, you Rubble will, will need to be a bit careful with his hearts going through this next Aga fight. Yeah, they they both have a blue potion still, so uh, so they're they're okay there uh, as long as they're careful on health. Because dying to Ganon, sure, it, it happens, but dying to Aga too, and now that that's something you really never want to see. Oh, absolutely. As long as you get to Ganon, you can at least mirror and go buy potions if you need to. But uh, Rupal is going into the Aga too now, and Justin is starting to climb up the gauntlet. And that's a nice triple to start with. <laughs> and a double. It's a very nice I could do for Rubel. Oh, that was so close. Rude, Dagger. That should have been a three cycle. I, like, it looked like it hit him. I did say earlier that he Aga would get him for skipping the net. That's what you get, Rubel. Yeah, well, he also had to kill Aga twice this this seed, so um, combine that's like a nine cycle Aga. It looks like he opts to use his potion right at the beginning here. Personally, I think I would have maybe used the uh, that good old magic cape first. But you know, if it works, it works. Not judging. Yeah, I I recommend the same strategy. If you have full magic, uh, use the cape, get in as many hits as you can, and uh, then use your blue potion and get get, it, get your uh, magic refill while you're at it. But th this is great positioning. Uh, three spins in the, in the top right corner is all it takes to get through cycle two. Come on, Ganon. Stand still for a little bit. Yeah. So that's yeah. one shot in. Deliberately tries to not get it so he can get a nice maybe triple here. One, two, and... Oh, two is good. He gets a four shot right here. That is a really super clean fight. So... Uh with that, with Justin, um, you know, being on Mordor two here, uh, you want to wait until we get them both in at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. So, Ru Rupal finishes uh, an SRTV time of one hour thirty four minutes and zero seconds. Uh, Justin unfortunately has forfeit at the uh, same time, so we will uh, we will bring them both in. Well, uh, we'll send them out invites, rather. I joined by Rupal and Justin Z. Uh, Gigi's Rupal on, on the win. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. What an amazing seed. That was such a fun thing to commentate, guys. You gave us such a different different routing through the seed that we were always trying to figure out who's in the lead, who's not. And it's right from the start with the myths. That was that was cool. Yeah, it was. It really it really really went around and around, didn't it, Rubel? 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I I don't know. I made a lot of mistakes early on, and then that put me in a bad mi uh, frame of mind. So I kept making smaller mistakes, and then a, a fairly large one. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> finally got it back together with some luck. Well, I know a thing or two about large mistakes, so we we share that and as we talked about. <laughs> Yeah, indeed, we saw a couple of things going uh, rather sideways, I would say, uh, going to, towards the end here for you, Justin. Uh, otherwise, Ruble, you had a couple of things in the beginning that was kind of, kind of you know, problematic. But overall, uh, because of the back and forth like that, we, we just had such a, an amazing race to commentate here. Uh, now, the bow, the bow inside Tower of Hera and... Oh, those uh, the flippers on the pyramid. Can you talk to us about that, uh, both of you? Um, well, I didn't want to enter Hera when I first was up there because I didn't have any weapon to kill Moldorm. So I just didn't. <laughs> and I also forgot to do Spiral Cave twice. Well, I, 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 tr I forgot to do it once, and then I tried to do it later and messed up. Um... It became fairly evident after a while that it was an Aga required seed to get to the east half of the Dark World, so I tried to set up a water walk in that. I forgot how to do that, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and then I guess you had learned later it wasn't Aga number required. Wasn't it? No. You needed, you needed to get the. F you needed to get the. Oh, yeah, it wasn't Aga number required at all. Nope. I, yeah. I, was, I was certainly hoping you'd think it was, but. I, yeah, it when I when I did Eastern, did the really early Eastern play, got the green pendant and got fire rod, and then the very next thing I did was Skull Woods, and got the hammer. I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, you know that was just crazy. As well as going straight up Death Mountain before even doing South Shore to get the bow. Um, you know, I. <laughs> The way I read the seed, it was all in front of me, and then it was just down to, to execution and and not making mental mistakes. So, so yeah. Yeah, I guess the biggest mistake for me was just spending like two or three minutes messing up that fake flipper, or if not fake flipper, water walk. Um, like I, I, I could go mode all the dungeons, <laughs> like basically. Once I once I found the the hammer, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> if you did everything else, you could before you found that. Yeah, that's having pretty, a pretty hammer cool. as your go mode really made you fly through all of those dungeons really fast. You, and at that at that moment, Justin did more dungeon than you did at that point, and we were wondering, yeah, he, probably he's a bit behind, right? Not really, no. <laughs> Well, th that was that was the most interesting part of this race was you know, Rupal had gone to the, the southern uh, light world first and picked up mitts, uh, so uh, you were able to get your your boots on your very first trip to uh, Death Mountain. Uh, Justin had to go back much later in the game, but Justin got the bow on on the first trip up there. So while Rupal, while you were spending a lot of time trying to sequence break Aga. Um, and then just cl cleared Aga. Justin just went to Eastern, got the got the fire rod, uh, got the hammer. But in in the end, that led you to the flippers and let you go mode six dungeons. So it was just it was really really weird how that turned out. <laughs> yeah, I can see that not finding the flippers would be pr a pretty bad uh, thing if you never check the pyramid. I was, yeah. uh... And I really had no excuse, because once I got the hammer, the first thing I did was save and quit to Link's house and go to Pod, and I just didn't go to the pyramid. So it's my own fault, and that's where it all just well, started what falling What worked out apart. well for you, Justin, was uh, picking, up the, picking up the flippers and then picking up Quake not too long at, thereafter. Uh, Quake being your go mode item. Uh, yeah, then I just started thinking about Misery Mire for no discernible reason, and the medallion I needed for that, which, if you were wondering, is why I mirrored out of Turtle Rock when I found the book. So, just, I don't know, just a, a comedy of just dumb mentality. Yeah, well, it, it does happen. I mean, 
ourselves, we did the same mistake too. Uh, at some point, we were wondering, oh, you know, we still need to find Bumbles from Misery Mire, and then realize, wait, Misery Mire is a planet. <laughs> we don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, hey, at least at least I wasn't alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I think my routing uh, blunders kind of led me in the right direction for the most part. Like clearing Agon or Agonim just made me focus solely on getting as much value out of the East Dark World as possible. Which, once I, I cleared out um, Eastern Palace and got the, the, the Fire Rod, I had also found the Flute there. And when it went to go activate the Flute, because my next step was just to visit Misery Mire, um, I'm like, oh, well, I'm in the area. I'll just finish Skull Woods, considering there's one more item in here. And then it had the hammer, and I'm like, oh, that's everything I need. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, uh, this, this see was something else. <laughs> it, it, it really was. If, um, you know, Justin, if you had uh, done, you know, Swamp and Thieves Town, not sw Swamp, uh, Swamp and Ice, uh, and then, then going up to Turtle Rock, you guys probably would have been, you know, like four seconds apart at that point. Yeah, I, that was just the last kind of insult to myself going to Turtle Rock first out of all those because I was thinking I still needed an item. Um, yeah, we would have been really, really close instead of just somewhat close. So shame would have been that's, would have been hype for chat. That, that's <laughs> randomizer, and you know we we never would have. We expected the um, the Aga one clear to you know be the game changing route. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's just how randomizer works sometimes. Yeah, that's true. But um, so G, you know, GG's again, Rupal, uh Going into you know uh, your next match with a, a win gives you a, a little bit of uh, a comfort zone there. Um, do you think that affects your? gameplay at all going to be a little bit more aggressive or uh, or a little less aggressive? Um, I don't know. I I find that I just try to be safe early on and then if the game presents me a weird opportunity, I'll typically take it. <laughs> so I guess that my, my answer is we'll see. <laughs> Any, any, any thoughts, Justin? You're gonna try to yeah, make some gambles. Well, I mean, I don't think I don't think gambles is the right word, but I mean, I, I like I don't view what I did going up Death Mountain so early, for example, as a gamble because situationally it was there. Even though that's a really rare play, I will try to play a little loose. I was already planning to do that. Uh, I told Rubel this in chat too. When you're against a runner that's an excellent um, player skill-wise and routes extremely solidly, um, the way that you get an edge is with plays like that when they work out, of course. So that was already my game plan. So I, if I do that and and luck's on my side, you know, over the next two games, it, it, if we go go to two, you know, at least I'll be able to say I gave it a shot. I definitely think that's that's the best attitude to have, you know, going into these these races. Is uh, you know, just give it a shot, do the best you can. Uh, you, both of you were, you know, were five two in a Swiss match, so being paired together, uh, you know, we we really got to see two runners of you know fairly similar caliber here. You guys both executed very nicely. Uh, the perceived lead, and you, and you can't really say lead to someone that enters Gans Tower, but the perceived lead throughout the game. It was just going back and forth. It was very close and very exciting. So, uh, I, I I thank you both for for letting us uh, watch this run, and uh, I know chat absolutely enjoyed it as well. Well, glad to hear it. Yep, thank you. So I will uh, check this check the schedule here and wrap things up. And uh, let's see, we have a. Race on Speed Gaming 5. Uh, that's match two of Sinhe and Pink Kitty Rose. That's 20 minutes in. Uh, as well as races on ALTDB Randomizer 2 and 3. Uh, both also started at 3.30. And uh, 
at four o'clock, so eight minutes from now, we have two races starting. Uh, Speed Gaming 2 is Jenga 23 versus Wind, Windu, and uh, LTT Randomizer 4 is the third race between M. Kostler and Gerdau. Uh, that one will be re really interesting to watch. So, uh, you guys have got lots of options to choose from right now. I uh, recommend everybody in chat, uh, as always, uh, try Randomizer for yourself if you haven't yet, because it's incredibly fun. And uh, be sure to give both Ruble and Justin a, a look at their channels. Links are posted in chat, and uh, see if you know see if their playstyle uh, entertains you and their and their streams are fun. I always recommend giving everybody a look. So uh, I'll wrap things up by thanking the uh, Speed Gaming staff, our Tracker OSS geek, and my co-commentator Dynasty. It's been a pleasure. Uh, last words go to you, sir. It was a very good pleasure with me to commentate with you too. It has been a while since I commented and this was a very great race to just shake off the rust a bit and get some good commentary and so I thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next time on the next race of A Link to the Past Randomizer. Goodbye Rando fans. <laughs>